Hello. Today's video will focus on how AI is going to influence our lives and particularly what ChatGPT and other technologies mean to us. So, first of all, let's think a bit about what we had in the past and I think that this is the most important part we are going to consider. Alright, the first aspect that we want to have in our minds is that um, develop current developments have not been in a way something that is earth-shattering. However, some of the consequences of those developments are. Uh, clearly, we have been on a technological evolution path that has not happened before. In the last uh, 20 or 40 years, we have seen many changes in our lives and in the way in which we interact with technology. However, there were few that had such a major disruption. We can consider the mobile phone, actually the smartphone, to be one of these such important advancements. But previously we had computers and those computers already made us the introduction that uh, later came on and unleashed our creativity. So, let's think about how we dealt with problems before and in what way this situation changes when we consider uh, the current developments. So, previously we had to consider the fact that each and every time when we had to solve a problem, we had inputs, some sort of logic and outputs. Although we, it may not be entirely the best way to present uh, the situation in a graphical and a practical term, I will use this simplified way of considering how we get to one point to another. The big difference that uh, happens, and of course uh, one that we are aware of, is that the logic of solving a task, because ultimately the idea is solving a task, boils down to using some elements we have in our environment. We have been using all sorts of ways to describe how we use a specific device. So, we have to give indications for someone to um, pick a document. We give indications on how a document is being written. We give indications on how a speech or a presentation should be held. And this is the important part, because in inputs we have, of course, some um, data, tools, and, of course, those tools can mean just about anything from, I don't know, a pen to something that is slightly more complex than that. And, of course, we are creating something. The logic means a set of rules. And, of course, describes a specific process. How do we get from something to something else that we desire? In the past, everything pertaining to logic was, of course, described more or less along the lines of specific uh, documents that were um, created by groups or something that was not, as in the case of our own activities that we are um, having some freedom in choosing. However, what matters the most in this um, aspect is that the logic was different from one problem to another, actually from one task to another. And this meant that when we had to describe an action, we used mostly natural language in order to um, describe the situation. However, we also use specific keywords 
when we are um, having specific actions. For instance, um, if we have to understand how we are going to carry a task in um, a mechanical system, we have to use the vocabulary specific to that activity. When we have to carry out an activity in um, the medical environment or the marketing environment, it doesn't matter. Just about any domain, we use specific language and a specific way of addressing. And then, of course, we are more or less suited in using that language, understanding it and generating the task at hand. We use in different parts of this uh, process, we use uh, various tools such as um, computers, such as uh, mechanical tools and so on. But we have to know this logic and we have to understand it. Unfortunately, we as humans are quite limited in our abilities of using a process as desired and in creating the expected outcomes. Most of the time we have the ability to um, adjust ourselves to better handle a specific task, but this is a limit that is uh, being set by um, our um, knowledge abilities, our um, physical abilities, and so many other um, aspects that are more or less in our control or outside our control. You may wonder why I made such a long detour from AI, chat, GPT, generative AI, AI, and so many other words that are so important. First of all, because there is a major reason why this has happened. And I think that what um, you should be aware of is that in all of these circumstances, we have mentioned the current approach. And I will give you one more detail why the current approach is very limited. Think about it. This is a side discussion, but actually, considers the same aspects that have been outlined here. When we want to have automation, because automation is also very important, we need to create and express a set of rules that are going to be applied in a specific process. So, we need first of all the concept then we need to translate, so we have to use a translation, and then we have the end result, which means that we reach um, product. Well, actually a logic, because that would matter more. Um, I would say a tailored logic. Why all of these aspects matter? Well, first of all, because in the concept phase, we are going to simplify the problem. And this is the first and the most important part. Then we have to use a translation. I mean, we have to translate our natural language into another one that can be readily used and understood by a machine. And then we create a tailored logic that, of course, can be applied to a tool so that it creates the desired outcome. Now, uh, what is very interesting in this process is the fact that we already have a way to describe this uh, situation. It's programming. Well, now we read something very interesting. Of course, I'm not talking about entirely new aspects. I'm talking just about the concept and what we are getting at. So, by using programming, we create a um, rough idea of what we want to achieve. Then we are going to use translation and we reach a tailored logic. What translation means? Because to some of you it may seem strange that I'm using such a word. Translation means
using a programming language. Well, using a programming language, this means C or C++, um, Python, and other such languages like um, Pascal, Perl, or designated ones such as uh, the ones uh, that you may consider for uh, different applications. For instance, when you're talking about um, generating um, 3D or 2D product, you can also think about AutoLisp. I give uh, this uh, particular example made or uh, created by Autodesk just to give the idea that there is already a language that could uh, describe a particular product. And in this, in this case, you are describing um, a drawing or that could be in two dimensions or in three dimensions, and this can also be applied in order to create a uh, 3D product. So you can give uh, this uh, a program to a machine and it would create a 3D product out of your um, desired uh, to your desired specifications dimensions and the way in which it is being built. I give this uh, very interesting example because automation and programming ultimately is the most important task by which we achieve high performance. We use those tools in the best way we can um, manage and we reach a desired product. Of course, uh, the situation is not as simple as it may seem, but I think that this boils down to the basic concepts. All right, so I think that this one, this created the actual background that we need in order to advance the discussion towards uh, AI, chat GPT, generative AI, and how this new technology changes just about um, everything in the way we have. So, um, I will use a simplified concept about generative AI and about AI in general. Because um, I think that the most important part is how it's going to impact our lives and how much or how many changes are going to occur just because we have a different way of solving our tasks. So, um, I will mention the three most important uh, aspects I considered and um, perhaps not in the best terms, but I think this will be understood regarding what actually happens. All right, so um, let's think about uh, the task at hand. In this case is um, machine interaction or probably, yes. Uh, I'm going to think about the other two uh, tasks at hand. For instance, uh, creating, creating uh, music. creating graphics. Okay. Um, let's say creating text. And we can think about so many other tasks that we could have. Mm.
we have the same rough idea of what happens in this case. We have some inputs, we have a logic, and we reach an output. However, the important part pertains to this logic that we are having in all of these processes. And you may wonder how this uh, situation changes. Well, the essential part is the following. We have an algorithm that can create a specific output. However, the important part is that this algorithm has a logic, and that logic is actually the part that pertains to AI and uh, that pertains to um, GPT. Well, how we can better explain, explain what uh, happens over here? We have something known as generative pre-trained transformer. which is actually the programming interface in lay terms. Why this matters a lot, and you may be very well concerned why I have used this way of addressing the problem. Because the most important part is that the programming that you would have been doing in a specific programming language and by using specific um, software development tools is being taken out of the discussion. The programming in interface has already been created by you, created uh, for you. And this is the major um, technology result that changes how we interact with uh, everything around us. Because before, it was not only the issue of having the right tool, in this case, meaning the right program that could uh, create the outcome or using the, the programming language that was highly suited, it was also learning how to use it and then evaluating the outcome. What, what is very interesting in this case is that the programming interface is already created for you and this encompasses just about everything you need. So, this is the first aspect that is groundbreaking. groundbreaking. The second one is about input. And input means a database query which actually uh, you can consider as using a search engine results, which actually is a um, task that has two uh, steps. The one that, you know, the one where you know how to ask for the data you need, and the second one when you extract just the required data. So using a search engine results is actually a two-step process. And another very important aspect is that this input means A human input, language 
natural language. And I think this is the most important part that concerns you. Natural language. Before you had to use a specific syntax and a specific way of describing your request. And of course this created a lot of problems because you had to adapt your way of thinking to translate this um, uh, for you have this idea into um, a resulting program, in a resulting way of addressing your specific uh, situation and creating a desired outcome. And this is the single most important part. You are using natural language. And natural language is actually essential because you have been using natural language since you were born. Um, of course, you improved your way of um, using uh, language as you uh, got older and got accustomed to all the aspects pertaining to our society. But the important part is that you have a natural language, you have a native tongue, and that native tongue or that foreign language you mastered so well can be used in order to describe what you want to do and use this as part of the input towards creating that desired output. And when you want to do such a task, you want to have a result, you are going to express everything in natural language. And this natural language, for the moment, um, considers only the possibility of taking a text input and then creating something that is a desired outcome. However, what matters more is that this is probably an initial state of using natural language, because I'm pretty sure that uh, at one moment in our evolution, we'll be able to use uh, gestures or a drawing that we had in order to um, have a better uh, or um, an easier way of creating a desired outcome. And this means that since we could use just about any manifestation, any physical manifestation as an input, it would mean that desired results are much easier to get by. And I think that this is the most important part, because in programming you had to uh, abide to such strict rules that um, programming was mostly relegated to people that um, really have the audacity and um, the persistence to um, reach such a good uh, way of handling this uh, particular programming task. And most of us, of course, the 99% of us probably, we are not able to use those programming language in those programming languages in order to describe our problems and rely on technology in order to solve it. So this is the important part. Right now we have the ability to use natural language. Of course, uh, we are in the initial stages of these developments. So um, no, we actually we are not in the initial stages of development. We are in um, the development stage, which means that we already have some tools, but these tools have to be refined. We have to understand the fact that the current technological level and uh, the interfaces we see, for instance, uh, the interface we use on the phone, the interface we use on our computer, have been developed for tens of years, for decades. And on the other side, uh, AI has been in development for um, decades, most probably, but um, it reached um, the actual uh, human test, meaning we can use those, uh, this technology only relatively recently. So this back and forth um, process that uh, receives feedback from uh, human users and then this feedback is used to refine the actual uh, product has only started um, a couple of years ago. And for most of us it started only in 2022. Which means that there is um, a lot of time that has to um, be dedicated in order to improve this 
um, processes and to reach much better results. In the case of graphical user interfaces, because I'm well accustomed to them, uh, it has taken roughly 10 or 15 years to um, refine the user interface in order to reach good enough results that are not very far from uh, today. Which means that probably in around 10 years we will see the same evolution for um, transformative or generative AI solutions. And this matters because we have to understand one aspect. I have mentioned over here just three tasks that uh, seem to be all too simple and uh, probably do not show the full extent of changes we are going to experience in society. But think about it, those are simple tasks. Those tasks could be later evolved into full, um, let's say, um, full responsibilities. And when we are thinking about responsibilities, we are thinking about a specific job that requires you to do something. While uh, creating music may be um, a lot more obvious in this, uh, in this case, or creating graphics, we have to think that just about any activity could be added here. Think about other example activities. Um, and without any particular uh, interest in, in this, I will uh, present one that takes a lot of time and actually requires a lot of um, uh, thought. Creating rules. And I, would, I will use the specific word, laws. Um, Let's say compliance. And compliance, I'm also talking about laws. I'm talking about um, assistance, which could be medical because that is the most obvious one, but could also pertain to consulting and just about any activity that is similar to that. We may consider uh, transportation, custom tailored. We may consider just about any production task. What I am getting at? The fact is that the situation is that before we had to use our own mind and probably limited tools in order to uh, get to a desired outcome. That was, for instance, I don't know, creating a law or checking the compliance of a law, which, which means that you would have to decide if something was respected or not. And this also takes a lot of time because you have to navigate all the input, which means the data that you have to process in order to assess if something is done correctly or not. And then, of course, you would be uh, having a decision. But this uh, data analyzing process would take a lot of time. Compared with that, computers can make a lot of data processing. The only issue is that we do not have the way of using it um, in an obvious way. And, of course, this means that the logic and um, the programming actually about is the difficult issue. If we would have the right programming uh, interface already designed for us, creating the rules or checking compliance or having medical assistance, consulting, transportation or just about anything that we can think of, could be made much easier. And here is the biggest uh, opportunity but also the biggest risk of uh, AI. Because it would massively change the way in which we interact with the others around us and how we are going to solve tasks. Because in this situation, we would need less specialization um, that we have today. For instance, we um, 
prepare to become lawyers, we prepare to become doctors. It's not as if those uh, jobs would be totally eliminated, but I think there is something else that matters a lot and that I will present in short. And hopefully it's going to be interesting as well. In general, when we think about uh, automation, we have to think about um, the rate of success. And in this case, we are not talking about automation in particular, but just about um, specialization. And there are two aspects that we are concerned with. The first one is for a human and the second one is for a machine. And this is an adaptive process. Both of them are adaptive processes. And I wonder why I made such a distinction between the two. Because I think it's very important. The moment a person starts something, and I don't know, it can be counted in days, for instance. The rate of success initially is very low because we have to adapt to a specific task. Then, the rate of success slowly increases until we get to uh, handle the situation better. And probably, as can be assumed, this curve is going to more or less represent how we um, handle the task. Then I'm going to spare you the same graphic and I'm going to present what actually happens. We are talking about hours and probably even less than that, minutes or seconds. Of course, uh, we have to consider an aspect that is outside of the current discussion and that is the one that uh, previously, there had to be um, an initial training time. And the initial training time, of course, is out of the discussion. But I think that it could be reasonably assumed to be uh, perhaps slightly lower in the case of a human and slightly higher in the case of a machine because we don't have uh, ways of... Um, reducing that uh, time as much. We still have to create, to have some activities that are you know, being handled before we actually train our model. But I think that this initial stage that would uh, point uh, as um, creating or actually uh, presenting the rules and setting them would be lowered with machines as we improve um, our way in which we describe to a machine what it has to do. So, since this, pro this um, amount of time is variable and it can be severely reduced uh, through technological advance, is not going to be presented over here. What matters is that we are already seeing a major difference. And there is another aspect that I would um, present to you and I think that this is also very important.
you may wonder why I made this additional graph, and I think that there is a very good uh, reason for this. H1 to H4 are human individuals. And we have to consider what is the desired uh, performance. Let's say we are going to consider the um, seventy percent general guideline of performance, meaning the rate of success. Okay, you may wonder why this matters a lot and why I made all these, um, let's say, scribbles over here. The aspect is very important and the, the reason is going to be immediately obvious. We have four human individuals. They all have to handle a specific test. Some of them, in this case human number two, handles the task so well and has a success rate that may reach, of course, up to um, let's say 95%, which is a very good value. Unfortunately, his other companions are not able to reach such a good result and they um, handle the task at mostly um, 20%, 40% or something along that line. What matters a lot in this, uh, in this situation? Uh, sometimes we may not find individuals that have such a good performance or we may not uh, motivate them or have the proper environment for them to prosper and reach this level of performance. However, we have something that sometimes we see all too well and that is um, the result of automation. And in order to describe the result of automation, I will make an analogy that is going to be highly helpful to you. Uh, let's think about uh, railway transport. Railway transport is, in many ways, a highly defined set of rules with um, obvious inputs and outputs. This, uh, using uh, or actually um, working in this environment sets very clearly certain tasks, certain rules that have to be obeyed in order to reach desired results. And it's highly predictive in what uh, happens. So, in this case, we can consider the previous uh, situation of um, um, train drivers being able to operate at a certain performance and others not being able to reach that. And, of course, there is going to be some variability in terms of um, predictability of reaching a certain desired uh, target. And you would have to make so many um, compensations in order to reach a predictable system. But if you would leave just about anyone to drive as they would, probably some of them would uh, have a fantastic performance and others would not be up to the task. Well, in uh, this type of uh, transport, we had been using automation in order to reach a better predictability. So, uh, when uh, someone has to um, obey certain speed rules, and um, in order to do so, has to apply uh, a certain level of acceleration or deceleration, which would mean brakes, um, we can replace the human factor with um, um, an automatic governor, if you want to consider it as such. And the interesting result is that when we are uh, replacing the human with um, an electronic device, we 
are mostly going to level this level of uh, we are going to level this uh, performance and the interesting part is that when we are going to uh, have such an influence we are going to notice much more consistent results and this is the part that may be uh, pertaining to any automation automation clearly requires um, a lot of training time but that that one is not uh, obvious before it solves each first task when the first task had been solved well enough this training time is over which would mean that the rate of success uh, drastically improves on the other side with a human probably you have to um, spend again some time in training each and every person you have to uh, make sure that uh, it follows the specific guidelines and improves its performance. With AI automation, you could reach a desired level that may not be up to the um, best uh, human performance in certain situations, but is going to be much above the typical uh, distribution you see in these areas. And I think that this is the most uh, important part, the fact that you are going to reach much more consistent results. And in railways, this has been uh, made obvious uh, time after time, decade after decade. So, um, each and every attempt at uh, improving performance has been um, met with, uh, with success. Of course, it requires a lot of investments, of course, there are risks, and of course, there are times when things don't always go as well as they should. But the clear path of automation is reaching a desired level of uh, performance that, of course, can be improved with, um, let's say, a varying cost uh, in uh, time. But what matters the most is that you reach predictability. The problem with um, um, the human factor is that uh, it's highly unpredictable. You may stumble upon a person that has a very good performance and also you may not uh, be able to um, have that person work long enough in order to be meaningful to your uh, activity. So this is one of the major reasons why automation has a lot of success. It offers predictability and you're going to uh, get rid of uh, one system and replacing it uh, with another, which of course is going to uh, create a commotion, but you're going to have uh, consistent results for a good amount of time. And if you take on, into account the possibility of having a, um, a system that can self-improve in time by analyzing uh, the feedback, it means that uh, you can have uh, much better results. And I think that this is the most important part you're going to notice. The fact that automation is not going to replace uh, creative gifted individuals. It's going to replace individuals that are not that well uh, handling uh, that task. Uh, we may not have the full extent of um, how much we see that in society. However, I'm um, quite confident that uh, the distribution we see over here is not far from uh, reality. Um, in general, uh, this distribution creates probably a rough estimation of a task that can be um, completed with a success uh, rate of probably slightly above 50%, which would be acceptable for the um, management. However, all of these um, possibilities are not offering the greatest performance possible. With automation, you could reach that desired level with much less uh, risks and in the much more uh, predictable way. And of course, you can improve this um, automation to reach better results as time goes by. I'm slightly repeating myself, but the idea is very simple. Automation can help a lot. And the moment you are creating something as I expressed before, and this was the idea of having a natural language way of um, expressing what kind of result you want to achieve, it means that we are uh, creating a consultant, um, smart entity that is going to interact with us and help us solve all of these uh, tasks. And this is going to have a massive influence on how 
we are going to interact with others, how we are going to um, be able to handle complex tasks, because um, it can be a specific task or it can be uh, the way in which we manage a work process, something like um, a project management, for instance. And all of these tasks, if given enough uh, time and enough input and enough feedback, they could be improved upon. You just have to create a model that would be uh, suitable to a specific task. And the moment you created that model, you can solve all of these tasks with good enough results. I should have uh, mentioned education or training just about for any purpose. Simulation, which could be used in various uh, situations. So what matters is that you have the means of achieving this end. And even if that end may not be achieved today, it's clear that we are going to create systems that are going to perform um, much better than your uh, typical individual, while, of course, they may not be up to the task of a gifted individual that um, is going to excel at that. But the most important part is that we are creating a basic level of performance that, of course, is going to impact a lot of our uh, jobs, a lot of our activities, a lot of um, ways in which we uh, handle tasks and how we relate to them um, today. And uh, this is going to be a highly transformative event. And of course, we are only uh, currently experiencing the initial stages. So I'm expecting that in around uh, 10 years, we will be in a totally different uh, place. It's not going to be probably earth shattering, but for someone that lived uh, 10 years before and they live in the, the present time, it's going to feel that uh, something has uh, changed. And um, this means that we have to be very cautious and we have to be um, thinking a lot of uh, in terms of how we are going to adapt to this change. As usual, uh, the change is not going to um, affect us all immediately in the same way. Uh, it's going to be uh, first uh, felt uh, most strongly by the advanced economies of the world, and then it's going to reach uh, the developing world. But uh, I think that this uh, is going to be a subject of interest for years to come, and there may be um, a lot of hurdles, a lot of um, barriers that have to be overcome, and of course a lot of uh, ethical concerns to be considered, before we reach um, the desired result, because it's going to be highly disruptive. But I think that in around 10 or uh, 15 years, we are going to see massive transformation. And um, even if it may not be in a readily obvious manner, I think this is uh, going to, to happen. Uh, whether this is for bad or for good, I don't think there is uh, a bad side to it, because each and every time uh, something evolved in our society, we found ways of adapting and of uh, using it to uh, good uh, results, as well as using it in uh, nefarious ways, because we have to think about weapons, for instance. But in general, there was always a progress, and this progress made us um, uh, much more independent and uh, unleashed our creativity in various ways. And I will use uh, just um, a, single, a simple example in order to um, show uh, showcase this uh, situation. For instance, we thought about uh, creating music and creating graphics. Well, um, some decades ago, uh, some people felt that using electronic instruments is going to be uh, something to be frowned upon is not going to be real music. Yet it became another part of our uh, life to uh, have music that is not generated through traditional musical instruments. And I don't uh, see with that uh, a problem today. Probably uh, before some persons would have had um, some fears about not having um, the traditional way uh, followed any longer. Graphics. Um, we had painters. We have um, fantastically gifted persons that created uh, masterpieces. Uh, then photography came into place and it created a whole different 
way of expressing using uh, technology that is also highly appreciated today. And there are masterpieces in terms of photography, although, of course, not in the same vein of um, paintings. However, there are very good creations. The same uh, process uh, occurred when um, technology made it possible to create digital images. And we have created fantastic computer graphics, we have created fantastic uh, computer um, uh, environments, and all of these can be part of art and culture as we see it. Which means that um, creating a different outcome than the one we uh, initially envisioned is not one that is going to affect our lives in a negative way. However, the difference between what we did before and what we uh, do today is that the tools that we have developed created different um, outcomes, different avenues, which means that they um, slightly added to what we already had in our um, environment, what we uh, were, were actually uh, capable of. They created a different set, a different niche, if you want to consider it as such. Of course, uh, in terms of text, uh, we have to be much more considerate because in many ways we have been using um, specific uh, text processing tools in order to make better documents already. And we may not be aware of this being used and improving how we uh, write today. And I think that this is another important uh, aspect because it's a particular example well, where uh, we have been using technology in order to improve things that we are well accustomed to and we do not notice the difference. I think that this is what is going to happen mostly with um, transformative uh, or generative AI and uh, particular solutions because they will improve our results without being readily obvious what happens behind the scenes. Uh, this is already occurring for uh, another uh, situation, when we are using information from the internet in order to uh, better assess what we are going to write about, or to improve our writing, or to give uh, it a solid basis or foundation. And I think that this is uh, entirely important because we are already using a technology and we are improving the current results of our activity, yet this is not obvious. And I think that this is probably what will happen in the future. We will improve our performance on various ways, but of course we will rely more on technology and this means that we will be more dependent on it with all the pros and cons that uh, come with this. Well, I think that uh, this rounds out quite well what I wanted to, to say. And uh, this is one of the reasons why I'm not seeing um, the new string of AI applications as being a real threat to, to humanity. It's going to make us um, better able to handle various uh, tasks. On the other side, of course, they are going to um, also present various challenges. However, it's something that will make it possible for our society to advance. Think about uh, automatic pilots and how they are used in order to um, simplify the work of a pilot when, of course, uh, a large uh, airplane is going to be uh, um, flown from uh, A to B. And this, the transit is going to make, um, to be better uh, worked with if that automatic pilot is going to be improved. Because more uh, transport was possible by using various um, ways to automate and simplify the work of a pilot. And we were able to have uh, bigger planes and we were able to have a lot more uh, improvements in, what, in the way in which we handle certain tasks. So this is why I'm not particularly concerned about this. I'm concerned about, however, the idea of disruption, how we are going to handle the transition period better, how we are not going to leave uh, certain persons uh, behind and how we are going to give them the means of uh, improving themselves and getting accustomed to a different technology. And I think that uh, we as part of a, of a highly developed world will have to think about ways in which we uh, motivate others to use uh, AI tools 
and also to help them uh, train um, in order to be better suited to, to uh, face these challenges. And this means that uh, AI has to become, and this is a highly important part, AI has to be available AI has to be available and affordable to anyone. And this is perhaps the most serious request you could have. Um, since we are talking about a technology that has been so disruptive, um, that uh, will be so disruptive actually, we have to think about affordability. This means that um, commercial models have to be well thought out, but also have to uh, take into account the general public service. And this means that there has to be some sort of um, way of improving how we are handling certain uh, tasks uh, today. And this is the most uh, important part in my perspective, because it has to be affordable, but also um, has to be well thought out. It, it doesn't have to pose a danger to the one using it or um, to the one that is subjected to it, which would mean that uh, guidelines and rules have to be enforced and they have to be closely uh, followed, which is the second part. And probably the second major issue has to be addressed, and this is a process in the making. We have not created the framework that ensures a consistent uh, way in which we are um, limiting the use of this technology in nefarious ways. Of course, there are going to be found nefarious ways to use it. This is unfortunately another um, side of our human nature. However, uh, in most situations, this should not be possible. But the first one and the second one is going to, uh, the first and the second aspect are going to be, um, let's say, key in the following years for how we relate to this technology, how we are going to make uh, better use of it, and what are, are our uh, prospects. So, um, I hope you enjoyed this video and the presentation I made. I'm pretty sure I have not used uh, perhaps the best way of expressing uh, those ideas, but I hope you uh, got the general uh, perspective on what AI is uh, in terms of um, an interface to our world and how um, those uh, automations could um, help us and why they may have such a high impact. So I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you very much for watching.